Hello my dear friends, this is channel The Mormic and I am Diana. If it is your first time on this channel, then nice to meet you. My name is Diana Albalawi and I'm a professional makeup artist and hairstylist from Russia and I do videos on this channel to educate you on makeup, to tell you some Russian makeup artists tricks and just for my fun to be honest but if it is not your first time on this channel then i'm very happy that you've come here again in today's video i'll be talking about brushes and to be more precise i'll be talking about quite cheap brushes from aliexpress that are quite a nice replica of makeup for our brushes so if you're interested how they perform how how much have they cost me would i prefer buying them again then stay tuned. So these are the brushes that I was talking about. They costed me 4,000 rubles. I'll put down how much it was in US dollars for you to know. And these are not all of them. These are just the ones that I decided to take into this video because I didn't like like all of them, but most of them. And another thing I wanted to say is that they are practically just the same brushes. Uh, as the Makeup Forever ones, but from AliExpress, and they cost it much, much, much less, but the uh, hair is the same, the synthetic hair, the numbers are the same, the look the same, the only difference is in these uh, wooden handles, but I'll show the difference a little bit later. I'm going to talk about the brushes that I've already tried and liked, and I'll be applying my makeup using them. This is the first brush, uh, its number is 152 and I actually own two of them uh, because I thought that this might be quite practical for my work. I think that the brush 152 is great for applying foundation, cream contour, cream blush, but I use it mostly for foundation. It's a very nice, well-packed brush with nice synthetic hair. It has a very nice shape. For my today's foundation, I'll be mixing Misha in the color 21 and uh, Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk in the color 4.5. I think that for foundation, this brush is a little bit small. I would prefer a little bit larger brush, but it still works and I, I'm quite tall. I have a large face, so that's why maybe I think this way. But if you're a smaller, more petite girl, maybe this will be a perfect size for you. With this brush you can apply your foundation in a very thin layer. It diffuses it seamlessly and makes the foundation look very natural on your skin. You can use it both in stippling motions as well as more dragging motions. The next brush I'm going to use is the brush number 220. I also own two of them. And with this brush, you can apply concealer, you can apply a shadow base, whatever you like. It's like a basic uh, synthetic brush for any cream, any concealer, eyeshadow primers or bases. And with this brush, I'm going to pick up my NARS concealer in the color Honey. After I've precisely applied my concealer, then I have to diffuse it. And for this purpose, I own two brushes. This is 242 and this is 236. You might prefer either of them, but I mostly like this brush. I like this shape more and I usually use this shape to diffuse my concealer, but this one works as well. You can also use these brushes to blend your eyeshadow, but I prefer to use natural hair brushes for this purpose. I still have some cream work to do, and now I want to do my cream contour. And in order to do that, I use this gorgeous 150 brush. It's an angled fluffy brush. It's not very big. It's quite like a small size, I would like to say. And you can put it right into the hollow of your cheek so it will place the product beautifully and very precisely. And it's so soft and so well built that even with very, very pigmented product, it can diffuse and put them on so nicely without moving the foundation. And I can even use like a red lipstick to do my blush without any difficulties. It will diffuse it marvelously, 
easily without patches and uh, making me like drag it all over my face just with stapling motions. I'll show you in a minute, but first cream contour. As my sculpting product today, I'll be using Kiko Sculpting Touch in color 201. If I think that this might be too much, I can go back with my brush with the foundation that is left on it, 152. As my blush today, I'll be using a lipstick by Chanel. This is Rouge Allo Vivet in the color 58. I actually really think that this color is very pretty. So I take the same brush that I used before and I touch it once. I use only stippling motions. I think that was a little bit too much. I'll just use my foundation brush to take a little bit off the excess, but I'll also do the stippling motion. Let's do the other cheek. that I already look so fresh. As I'm done with all the creams, I think that's time for powder. And for the powder, I have several brushes from these sets. So these are the brushes that you can use for the powder. This is the fan brush. It's You can use it for lots of purposes. One of them is powdering, but I don't think that this is the best of them all. The number of the fan brush is 134. This brush is 130 and I think that it is very, it's a very large brush, just compare it to my face. It's, I think that you might use it for powder, but I would rather prefer it for doing the body. For example, like fast foundation application or bronzing or highlighting your body, because I feel that this is too big for a face. But if you prefer large brushes for powdering, this will be the perfect for you. It's. It's quite well built, it's very delicate, and I, I really like this brush. These two, I think, are the best, in my personal opinion. This brush is 128. It has quite a nice size, it's quite big, so you can do the powdering quite fast and uh, quite delicately. But, as it's like a little bit squished, you can also use it for bronzing and for a little bit maybe of blush if you like quite a lot of brush but you want to diffuse it very nicely. So this is a great brush. And the brush 160 is one of the best brushes I think also here because it has a very nice size and you can use it as well as for your foundation for example, if you want to do it faster, but I would rather prefer to use it for your powder, bronzer, blusher. It's a very nice brush. I'm, I think that I might order one more. As I have already worked with the brush 160, I wouldn't use it today. I know that it's perfect and gorgeous. I will try to use 128 today because I'm more interested in how it performs, but I'm sure it will do marvelous job. And as I'm experimenting today, I'm going to mix two powders, Laura Mercier and this Manly Pro powder. I'm mixing them together because I think that Manly Pro HD powders is a little bit too light and I don't know how, but through it you lose the coverage, whereas Laura Mercy, in my opinion, is too thick and heavy. Quick dust. So now it's time for the bronzer and I want to use this 134 brush. Uh, what I think about it, it's a very nice fan brush and as it is very soft and gentle, It'll diffuse product 
very seamlessly and you will see only a soft veil of it so even if the product is quite dark for your skin tone for example the bronzer is a little bit dark for your skin tone it will apply it very nicely you won't see any patches and etc as my today's bronzer i'll be using charlotte tilbury filmstar bronze and glow So this is what I have now. I think now it's time for the highlighter and I will be using MAC Double Gleam. It's a very nice highlighter, especially for a lighter skin tone. And with my fan brush, I'll diffuse it. Another brush they suggest for applying highlighter is 144. But I think as this brush is quite small, much smaller, uh, quite a small brush, it's for more precise application and for more intense application of the highlighter. Let's do that. And I'll do that on top of the highlighter that I diff more, more diffused than like strategically applied so that I have the more in intensified shine like in the place where I put this highlight right now and it will be more diffused around. I think that this brush will be also very useful as a powder touch-up brush that you can take with you uh, for strategic applying of the concealer for example when you want to like do this triangles and lighten uh, the places you want to like make more forward looking i also tried to use this brush for applying my eyeshadow base and it worked very very nicely uh, did it get get into the roots of the lashes but it diffused the edges very good so this is a very nice brush as I'm not into flat synthetic brushes for applying your foundation, I, I think that I won't make much use of the 108 brush, but if you're a fan of that, maybe you'll consider using it. You'll like using it. I don't know. I just have it. Sometimes I need such brushes, sometimes I don't. Most, most of the time I don't. <laughs> so just now it exists, it's also really nice. So the brushes that I'm left with, uh, these small brushes and don't feel like doing eye makeup today I'll just tell what I like these brushes for and I'll start with the easy one so this is 276 this is a brush for brushing your brows and uh, it's also a comb so that you can brush your eyelashes as well if you have for example excessive mascara on them brush number 274 so it has like two ends <laughs> it has like brush on one side and this spoolie on the other side and i don't think that this is very thin enough to draw hairs but you can use it for eyeshadows in your brows a nice brush too the next brush is 172 and you can actually draw some nice eyeliners but i'm not a great fan so if i'm going to blend this like eyeliner so more like tight lining your uh, lash line then i'll use it but you can still do very thin like strokes with it so i'll draw my brows with it right now to show how thin it can work so actually quite a nice brush but i have another favorite for very thin work for my brows i'll be using a brow tint by manly pro in the color et03 so you can draw like individual hairs If you really have time, patience. 
and willingness of course so it's a very nice brow brush for me for powders as well so i've done the second brow off camera and as you can see it looks quite convincing you can really draw hairs with this brush but it will have be like really careful brush number 208 it is also a very multi-purpose brush you can use it for tight lining your eyes you can use it for lips you can use it for concealer you can use it for carving your brows for carving your like lips for everything just basic synthetic brushes brushes number 208 they are actually made of wavy hairs so they will be perfect for the diffusing the eyeliner for applying eyeshadows closely to the roots of the lashes for any cream work for powder work very nice brushes and as these brushes are synthetic they are very nice to work tightly because they're very soft and they don't have any cut hairs because even when you uh, buy quite expensive natural hair brushes with this shape they usually have one or two hairs that were cut and that's why they are not very pleasing and nice when you use it around the eye area especially when you press and these are very soft brushes 216 very nice shape also wavy you can again use it both for powders and creams without the fear of ruining them and i think that i will m mostly use them for creams because i have my nice pencil brushes for powders but still these can work both with powders and creams and these are great for applying tints on the eyes cream eyeshadow like going in the between brushes on the lower lid you can also apply lipsticks with them because if you want this like diffused uh, kissed look for your lips very nice brushes really like them and you can use them for concealing work if you like need very small blending and precise blending very useful brushes 218 this is the bigger brother for 216 let me make a comparison of them i hope you can see the difference it's a little bit taller, <laughs> uh, the bristles are taller, but it's the same thickness. Again, all the above that I said, but this might be a little bit more useful when blending the eyeshadow into the crease, like precise blending of the darkest shade into the crease. 212, this is a very small precise pencil brush. Again, wavy hair synthetic, everything is synthetic in this video. This will be great for everything that 216 was but it will be more precise so you will it has less like this blending area you will work with great for under eyes great for blending pencils eyeshadows for the pencil eyeshadow technique when you use pencil to darken the outer corner of your eyes so great brushes and again as they are synthetic i won't be afraid of ruining them <laughs> applying pencil with them because i'm usually like very cringy when i use my natural hair brushes with this shape for doing that great for the lips as well and now i'm left with uh two brushes there are four of them but they're doubled so 202 and 174 I think that 174 is the perfect lip brush. It's actually quite large uh, and you can also use it for concealer and basic synthetic straight hair brush. I need those so <laughs> great to have them and usually I don't feel quite nice when I buy very expensive lip brushes because they are almost the same i don't know what to pay extra money for and the brush number uh, 202 this can be both used as i think for the lips if you want more precision and for the eyes if you want to tight line your eyes with the gel liner for example or maybe maybe you can use it for liner i don't know i don't use these types of brushes for liners but i think you might so really nice brushes to have but i think i'll be using them more for the lips and so this is it there were some other brushes but i didn't didn't really like them that much or they one of them got ruined like the basic liner brush so that's it for today so i've been talking about these brushes for such a long time and what do i think about them do they really look like true makeup forever brushes 
I own only one Makeup Forever brush and it is their dual fiber 122 brush. Really love this baby. And here it is in comparison to 160 brush. As you can see, the size is the same. The like this metal thing is absolutely the same shapes. All the names are in the same places with everything. And I also compared them in the shop to the same brushes and the hairs look absolutely the same. They're the same like thin and they really are the same brushes. The only difference in them is that this part is a little bit lighter because it has less of coating of this lacquer what is it called i think lacquer i'm not quite sure i think you understood so it has less of this finish it's more thin but otherwise it's the same and as it has less of this lacquer it can be not as like smooth it can be a little bit less smooth otherwise these brushes are 100 percent the same absolutely and even if they are not the same quality as the original ones. So, for example, they will die <laughs> in less time. They cost me maybe 120 rubles each. So it's about 1.8 US dollar, I think. Yeah, about 1.8 US dollar each. Whereas these brushes are quite expensive. And that's why I don't regret buying them at all. I actually first ordered quite a small set of eight brushes and I like them that much that I ordered three more, three more, but in other brushes to try them, almost all of them. <laughs> so that's what I really think about these brushes. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. This will be very sweet of you. And I also have an Instagram where you can <laughs> stay tuned with me and watch my other works and maybe my other artworks like as a makeup artist. And also have an Instagram of photography. So if you're interested in that, maybe you also consider subscribing to this Instagram too as well. And I hope that I'll see you next time. Write something into the in the comment section. This will be very sweet of you. And bye-bye.